Carnock notation, also known as Carn notation, or just shortened to Carn, is a square one notation I invented in early 2019. The goal of this notation is to shorten the visual aspect of algorithms as well as making the algorithm easier to memorize. An added aspect is that it makes it easier to communicate with other people, and it also applies to OBL and PBL extremely well. The basic notation, meaning the ones that are the shortest and the most beneficial to learn, is comprised of seven letters. U, D, E, F, M, W, and T. With these moves slash triggers alone, you can create almost any algorithm on the square one, as long as it stays within cube shape. Keep in mind that this notation only works well within cube shape. These seven letters, along with the added two and difference between lower and uppercase, give us a handful of triggers that are very common on the square one. Without further ado, let's dive right in. U and D. This is probably going to be extremely familiar with most cubers, as this is no different than any kind of n by n notation like 3 by 3. U does a clockwise 3 0 move, D does a clockwise 0 3 move, and U prime and D prime do exactly what you'd expect. Pretty simple, you get the idea, but keep in mind that this is independent of alignment, so if you have top misaligned, you can still do a 3 0 or a U or a U prime. If you have double misaligned, you can still do a D or a D prime. So a lot of CP algorithms rely on this fact, as you can do any of them with any misalignment. Small u and small d. So why do we need these letters? Well, the better way of answering this question is with another question. How can we do a u move on this square one, assuming that we have misaligned u layer? How can we do a u move, but with two restrictions? The moves we do are smaller than a 3, 0, so it covers less distance, but it still stays within cube shape. So, this sounds a little complicated, but all this means is this. Say we have misaligned U layer, and we want to do a 3, 0. But instead of doing a big U, like that, we want to do less than that. So, how do we do that? We can do a 2 instead of a 3. But, we still want it to stay within cube shape. So, the next smallest move we can do to make that true is a negative 1 on bottom. Therefore, a small U is 2, negative 1. A small u prime is negative 2, 1. A small d is negative 1, 2. And a small d prime is 1, negative 2. So keep in mind that this is not alignment independent. Small u moves and small d moves are not alignment independent. However, big u and d moves are. So small u you can only do with a top misaligned, like that. And now we have the bottom misaligned, which means we can only do small u prime, like that. And going along the same concept, if you do small d, you can only do it starting out with the top misaligned, and you can only do small d prime starting out with the bottom misaligned. <clears throat> In the very early days of me developing this notation, I initially wanted to call this kind of move U hammer or something, because the corner and edge sort of look like a hammer moving, uh, where the edge is the handle and the corner is the sort of face of the hammer. Um, it might not help you, but it could. It's, it might be a helpful visual. It's something that I just did in the early days and dropped very quickly, but it might help you. So before we go any further, we should go over how we can already apply these two kinds of triggers to the square one. Let's take a very well-known corner permutation algorithm, nj, or n perm on top, j perm on bottom. For the sake of the example, we're going to do it with misaligned top. The optimal algorithm for this would be slash u slash u prime slash u slash u prime slash. So what car notation does is it eliminates the slashes so, so the slices are implied and you can sort of take an educated guess as to where it starts. So we would do u, u prime, u, u prime, right? So how do small moves play a part into this? If we take the nj algorithm and replace all of the u moves with small u moves, here's what happens. we get a different PBL. We get V on top, F on bottom. So just keeping in mind that we can do these sort of move replacements that make PBLs different or algorithms slightly change is a really good thing to know, and it'll help you in the long run. It doesn't just end there. You can play around with the variations of the U moves. If you replace only half of the U moves with small moves, you get any combination of SP. So here I did half big moves, half small moves in that order. And now I'm going to do half small moves, half big moves to solve it. So just with two variations of one move, we can already create a handful of very useful algorithms. W and B. So you might be thinking to yourself, 
Isn't it a little long-winded to see a bunch of repetitive U and U prime moves when doing NJ? Well, there's a trigger that is shortenable for that as well. Whenever you have the trigger U, U prime, that can be rewritten as W. Why? Well, it literally is pronounced double U. So I thought it would be pretty appropriate to name it after a U, U prime trigger. The question might arise, why not make it U, U like this? instead of u, u prime. The only reason for that is u, u prime is statistically more common as a trigger than u, u, so I wanted to give the more common trigger the easier to remember name. So how does this mirror to the D layer? Well, if you have D, D prime, you can stick them together and get, well, B. Although B isn't pronounced double D, it visually appears that way because a capital B is just two capital Ds connected to one another vertically. So this is starting to make sense. W and B are sort of the double trigger counterparts of U and D, where you do one clockwise move and one counterclockwise move sort of in, alter in an alternating fashion. And if you have W prime, that just means you start with a counterclockwise move and finish with a clockwise move. So going back to our NJ alg, U, U prime, U, U prime becomes a much more manageable W, W. JN becomes B prime B prime, or B B if you want. You can probably guess what the next step is for W and B, and that is to, well, make them small. W and B can become W and B if you do them as small U and D moves. The only caveat here is that a small W can only be done with a 1 0 alignment, and a small W prime can only be done with a zero negative one alignment, so bottom misaligned. And small b can only be done with top misaligned, and small b prime, bottom misaligned. Unlike the big u, d, w, and b moves, their small counterparts are not independent of alignment. They have to be done within a certain alignment or else they will not work. Big e and small e. So we've covered big u and d and small u and small d, and their counterparts where you combine them, so how do we notate something like u d prime in one slice? Well, I looked at how it moves the cube, and if you notice, it looks exactly like an e slice on 3x3, three three, like that. So, naturally, I wanted to name it e, but instead of following d like it does on 3x3, three three, I wanted to follow u just so that it would make sense. So, capital E would be u d prime, and capital E prime would be u prime d where if you have a capital E, both of the layers move in the same direction. The small e, however, means the layers are going to go in opposite directions. So that would mean that small e is a u d, and small e prime is u prime d prime. With these alone, we can create PBLs like nn plus and nn minus. And it's very common in equator flip cancels and various PBLs. Big M and small m. So you've heard of M2, which is the trigger that does these swaps, where you put, take the bottom middle edges and the top middle edges and swap them. Uh, it essentially does an M2, what an M2 would do on 3x3 to a square one. What's a little iffy about this notation is that M2 doesn't specify which alignment we can start with, because the algorithm can either be done as slice 1, 1, slice, or slice negative 1, negative 1, slice. There's an inherent symmetry to the trigger. So what I did to make it concise is I removed the 2, and I made it so that if it's going in a clockwise direction, it's M. So we're, if we're doing 1, 1, this is M. And if we're doing negative 1, negative 1, like that, that's M prime. Should be pretty straightforward. But what about lowercase m? Well, it's just the same trigger, but instead of edges, we do it with corners. So lowercase m would be 2, 2 and lowercase m prime would be negative two, negative two. With these alone and some u moves, you can create easy algorithms like o perm on top, op on bottom, and o perm on top, pn on bottom. Big T and small t. So t stands for two, and we already have a move that starts with two that's pretty small, which is two, negative one. We already have a name after that, which is small u. So the next most common move is a 2, negative 4 move, where we have something like that, um, or a negative 2, 4 move. So naturally, capital T stands for 2, negative 4. 
and capital T prime stands for negative two, four. Just with capital T's, we can create a very easy three slice PBL known as PNPN. PN. And its lowercase counterpart is just the mirror. So instead of two negative four, we would get four negative two or negative four two. So still following U, if we have lowercase t, we do four negative two. And if we have lowercase t prime, we have negative four two. Big F and small f. So this is diving way more into the OBL side of things, but this trigger is still fairly prevalent. F stands for four, and in this case, the move four one. So F would equal four one like that. And keep in mind, we can only do it with the bottom is aligned and f prime would be negative 4, negative 1. Like all the other letters, this has its lowercase counterpart, which is 1, 4 for small f, and negative 1, negative 4 for small f prime. So this is all great and all, but you might ask yourself, why is this trigger needed? It doesn't seem very common in any EP or EO algs. And the answer is somewhere else, OBO. Basically, if you do slice, f, slice, or any combination, big or small, you can basically set up any variation of good thumb thumbs, which I'm not going to get too into it, but it's basically one of the main building blocks of OBL. I like to call it the scallop kite of OBLs because there's so many other solutions of longer OBLs that lead up to this and reduce to it. So this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of OBL, but if you want to check out more, definitely check out Oksawachi's tutorial on OBL. He has a wonderful series covering every single case, and it's the easiest way to learn it on the internet, I'd say. U2s, D2s, and their small counterparts. We've already defined big U and D moves, but what happens if we needed to do a U2 or a D2? Well, that's kind of already the answer. U2 and D2. Pretty easy. However, a comment on one of Sam Feng's older videos on my notation really stuck out to me. A suggestion that 5 negative 1 should be given the trigger small U2. I saw this comment and instantly liked the idea, so full credit is to CubeAlgs101 on YouTube for that idea. So small u2 is 5, negative 1. Small u2 prime is negative 5, 1. And although you should probably never use these in a solve, negative 1, 5 is small d2, and 1, negative 5 is small d2 prime. With small u2s alone, you can do 3 slice op op by doing small u2, small u2 prime. And believe it or not, that's actually it. There are actually more complex triggers that are in my Karnak notation Google Sheet, which is linked in the description, but I figured making a video on the simplest and most common ones would serve as a great introduction to optimizing square one algs and just a great introduction to my notation. I never made an official video on it, so I thought this would be the great go-to source for this. Uh, if you want to learn more car notation, the more advanced stuff, uh, there's a little more in my sheet. There isn't too much more, and if you want explanations, you can just hit me up in the Square Wonders Discord. But with these moves alone, you can create almost any EP alg, any EO alg, an overwhelming majority of PBL, and all of it if you use 2 alg. Uh, and you, can, you basically get the idea. It also serves as a great way to memorize algs, because you memori you're memorizing letters instead of a bunch of slashes and numbers. Um, and it's easier to just type out and communicate with other people when you're discussing algorithms. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful, and enjoy car notation. See y'all.